Hello there. I'm going to show you how to use streaming software to make a live stream on Facebook or YouTube. The process is essentially exactly the same. Uh, a few people have asked me to do this and I've been trying to do it for a while and I've had problems and that's why I'm doing it like this. So the quality is not going to be quite as good as it could be um, because I've found that screen capture software doesn't like streaming software. So when I've tried it, it's all lagged and moved slowly and the, it was useless. So instead I'm filming with a camera. So I apologize, obviously that means that the screen quality won't be as good, but maybe it's handy because I'll also start off by showing you my setup. Um, this is this is an optional thing. You can do all this off one screen without question because things sort of work in the background, but for the sake of this video it might be handy because I can separate everything out to show you it. So uh, this is the setup. It's awfully complicated. That's the main laptop, but I've also got two other displays, that one and that one. So it's all running off this laptop, okay? Um, basically, sound is coming from this. Luckily, because I do football commentary, I've got lots of kit lying around. So I, I found that on the early videos, the sound quality was not great. And so you just use the internal microphone. So I've just rigged up a mixer to a microphone, a proper microphone, and I've put it into the laptop. Those two connections are the two extra screens. And so because of that, I can I can use this one as a main screen and then these two as auxiliary ones. And this is the main thing I'm going to show you, which is the OBS streaming software. OK, now. When I start on that, I will put in a bookmark. These fancy new bookmarks they have on YouTube, they're cool. Um, at the so that you can jump straight to that if you want to skip all of this. But firstly, I'm just going to show you, just to remind you, because I did do a video on this before, but just to remind you, I'll set up a stream. I'll do this from the very start. So I go to my YouTube or the school, beg your pardon, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, that's on this screen, isn't it? Beg your pardon. And I'm going to go live. And I'm going to schedule one. I, I will genuinely schedule my next live broadcast because it's going to be Romeo and Juliet. Now, because I've been doing Romeo and Juliet videos, it's straight away on YouTube suggests you want to reuse the settings from the previous one. Now, in this case, I do. And I'll show you the advantage of that in a second. But you could also dismiss that and just start from scratch. So I'm going to reuse the settings. Now, it's copied everything, all the text I have for these Romeo and Juliet ones. It suggests a time, well, I want it to be tomorrow. So, and I want it to be at, well, I'm starting it at 10, but I actually, let me start it a little earlier. I'll, I'll put 10, but I'll actually start it a little earlier. Okay. This is the thumbnail I've used for the previous one. So, fine, it's kept that. All the settings are the same. So, if I now go down to the bottom and click on create i've now created a live stream now an important point here is the stream key which is this hidden thing here and i need that so i'm going well in normal circumstances if you're setting up a new stream you would copy that so copy the stream key uh, i don't need to in this case because i'm reusing my settings because the stream key is what lets you communicate with the streaming software so let's get on to the point of this video the streaming software okay let's just get across to here this is the streaming software that i use it's called obs it's free and it's very good um there's no catches there's, there's no um adverts in it or anything like that it's open source software that means that the people who made it want other people to improve it so the actual programming the coding in it is available for anyone to use themselves and uh, that means that there's lots of as i'll show you in a minute there's lots of different interesting things that you can do on obs but if you want to do something that isn't on it search their forums and you'll probably find that someone else who knows how to code has also thought, oh, I wish I could do this with OBS. And because they can access the source, they've done it. So you may find a plugin that will allow you to do something that isn't on OBS with it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get rid of my Roman Juliet feed, but I will come back to it in a bit. Scene collection. Now, this basically is all the different scenes that you have created. Yeah. 
I'm going to make a new one. So, so you know, the different, bro so for example, that's the Romeo and Juliet one there, which I can load up quickly. This is for English Zoom meetings because I was going to show some data on a different screen. Uh, this is for the World Cup of Challenges we did quite early on in lockdown where pupils did different stunts, a basic webcam broadcast. So I can click on them and, and have different settings up. But I'm going to make a new one and I'll give it a name, which will be Test Stream. Call it what you want, call it something obviously that reflects what it is. And then I've got a blank canvas here. Now, as you saw, this bit up here is the preview, so you'll see what um what you're what you're putting onto the screen up here. You can remove all of these and move them about if you wish to. Yeah? So that's quite a handy little thing. In fact, I rather cheekily put one on my laptop there. So that's from OBS. I'll come to that in a minute. So, what do we do for streaming? Well, firstly, we want to build up a scene. Now, you can have as many scenes as you want, as far as I'm aware. So, if you want, you could have a pre-stream screen. So, if I select that scene there, I think I'll rename it. I'm going to rename it pre-stream. Now, this will be what plays before the actual stream itself yeah and what i've got to do now is select the sources that i want to be in that pre-stream so what do i want people to see before i go live yeah so that people can know there's something coming well what i do is add a source so i click the plus button i'm going to add an image and I can either create a new image or I can add an existing image. Now, there's none there at the moment because those existing images are all stored within the different collections. So I've got, if I did this in my room, you might want to see lots of different images come up as an option. So I'm going to create a new image and I'm going to call it pre-stream image. Okay. Having done that, click OK. And now I am given this where I can browse for an image. Well... I'm going to go to Downloads. It's a nice picture of the school being made virus safe. And I'm going to go into here. Now, what shall I put on? Well, I'm going to do a bit on Guy de Maupassant, who's a French short story writer. So I'm going to go for him. So he can be my screen image before the stream okay so there he is now he's popped up there i can manipulate this i can stick it there if i want to it looks a bit weird on its own i can spread it out that's, that's a huge picture of guy de maupassant eh? massive guy <laughs> beautiful i'd like to add a graphic to tell people that the stream's starting soon so i can go up here text Pre-stream sub is the title, and then let's just type something in. So it, it works like a normal word processor, to be honest. Uh, I don't want it to be Arial. I think I'll make it, I don't know, barn shrift. That sounds fun. I can control the size. Look how huge it is, 230. I don't know why it defaults to that. You do need pretty big font size, of course, on a screen, but let's give it 72 and see what it's like. Right. Stream starts soon. I'll do on it. Okay, it still looks a bit big, does it? Mm, well, let's click OK. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> right, so there it is. It's too small, isn't it? But I can drag it out and make it a bit bigger. Stick it on there. It looks awful, doesn't it? But you see the idea. And the, the idea as well, that normally what I would do is I'd actually make a graphic and with the writing on just stick it on there as an image and that's that i'd also add some music so let's add some music by going to media source and um pre-stream tune okay click okay again the same window and i'm going to go to downloads and i'm going to look for thor's hammer that's a catchy little tune. Little heavy metal. Guy de pass on. Would have wanted that way. Now, I might leave that pre-stream on for 10 minutes or so just to get people in, let them know it started. So I'm going to click on loop because that means when the song ends, it'll start again. Bam! And now... Now then, for some reason, it doesn't 
preview it with sound, uh, or if it does, I've not worked it out yet. <laughs> However, can you see here? The music is playing. Yeah, that's the audio. Beforehand, there was nothing there, so there was no audio. See these icons here, these eyes, those can disable it. So say you wanted to remove the picture of the Maupassant, boop, it's gone. Beep, it's back. Also, the order is important. The top one is the top layer. Obviously, it doesn't matter with music, it's going to be there anyway. But the subtitle there is above the image. If I pull it down, I can change that order, but it's hidden now. You see that? So when you're building a scene, you need to bear that in mind. So I've got my pre-stream. Yeah. So that's my pre-stream scene. Now I need to create my main stream. So I'm going to create a new stream scene. Okay. Main stream. And there we've got another blank canvas, and I can now start pulling sources into it. I can also add transitions there. I can fade from the pre-stream to the main stream. Well, firstly... I want the webcam, video capture device. Okay, so I'll call it webcam. Okay, and then there's me, hooray. Hello everyone. Um, yes, that's what I want, that's absolutely fine. So it's just defaulted to the default settings of a webcam. Click okay, and here I am. I might move myself around a bit. Let's see how the scene develops, shall we? Now, the webcam has not got audio. That's because I've stuck my microphone in. If I take that out, the webcam's microphone would pick up. So don't worry. Well, you do want to watch that, that there is activity there, okay, which matches your voice. So I'm going to add, because I haven't got audio, I want to use this microphone, an external audio source, audio input capture. I'll call it mic. And now I have to select the correct input. Default would be the, the webcam one, which is disabled because I plugged that in. But if I select microphone there... Oh, see, it's picking up the humming of the laptop. And that's now my microphone. How do I know it's not my internal microphone of the laptop? Well, oh, can I show you this? This is going to look strange, isn't it? If I tap the mic, if you can just see around the corner, can you see... I don't, I don't have to see me tap a mic here. It's jumping up. It shows my mic is live. Yeah? Because if I just tapped that and it wasn't connected, it wouldn't jump up so high, would it? Okay, okay. So, I've got sound and I've got vision. But I've left a big gap. Now, let's be honest here. Perfectly fine if you want to, to just click on that. And drag it. Make it full screen if you want to. That's absolutely fine. But the reason to use streaming software, of course, is to have fancy little graphics and stuff on it, isn't it? So let's have a little play with that, shall we? I'd like a bit of information about Guy de Maupassant showing as well. So I'll put in an image, I think. Should I put that picture of him in again? Just to remind us what he looks like. So I'm going to create a new image. Oh, hey, pre-stream image is already there, remember? I'll just click on him. Boop, I got Guy. I got Guy. He's multiplying. So, there he is. I can pop him next to me somewhere. Make the bases equal size if I want to. So now I've got me and Guy. If I want to hide Guy, I can do so. Remember, of course, I could just drag this down here. Have Guy in the corner, sort of like a, a new, you know, on the news broadcast when you have a picture up here. And if I wanted to, while streaming, I could just make him appear in us like, like this. One of the great short story writers is the Frenchman Guy de Maupassant. Clever, huh? Yes, yeah, so you could just do that if you wanted to. Remember, he's had to be at the top there, otherwise he wouldn't appear because he's got to be a higher layer than the webcam. I don't want to do that, though. Let's, play, let's try something different, shall we? Oh dear, sorry, beg your pardon. I've just messed him up, haven't I? Let's make me small again. Plop. Stick Gee back on. I'd quite like a sort of rolling bit of information about Gee. I'd quite like to show you something, some background, which you can just read if you wish to. I've got an image slideshow, and I prepared 
some background information slides on the Maupassant. So, if I go, as a member loop it, so it'll only go around once. I go down to my source here, the image files, and click Add, Add Files. And I am gonna go to Downloads again, and go down to that folder where I put it. I'm gonna select that, and that, and that. Click Open, there they are. And now when I click OK, I'll have this. Change the scale a bit, but you'll notice it will start to scroll around. Do you see that? So one minute, it says one bit of information. You can change the duration of each slide, I would say. Leave them on for longer rather than shorter. And then there we are. So we got some scrolling information. You can have as many images as you want for that sort of thing. Looks bad, doesn't it? It needs to be a bit neater. To, actually, the... The format of the Maupassant is the problem because it's portrait. But we can try and tidy up a little bit, can't we? Stick me by there. Pop this. Oops, a daisy. Pop this one. Oh, why won't you move? I know why you won't move. Doo -doo, there we are. Squeeze that in a little bit so it's all neat and tidy. Oh dear, now nah, I've got a problem there, haven't I? So what I'll do is I'll pull that across a bit now, because I'm the bottom layer, and not <laughs> the problem will show. So that looks a bit neater, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be nice to have a sort of message, sending a message to viewers as well, like a disclaimer or information on social media links? Yeah, let's put another image in. So this will be um, footer. New image. And I'm gonna select this which i made earlier it's got all the information now when i saved this i made the background transparent so although that looks solid color when i click on it and put it on you'll see that you can see through this top part you see that so you can see the banner and you can see through it and so i'll maybe pop that here i want it to line up with the pictures and i will pull it across till it's full screen Screen width, oh, I need to line it up again for a second. Has that full screen width? Pretty much, not quite. That's perfect. And I'll drag it up, and you see the picture at the top is transparent, so I can just plonk it wherever I want here. Yeah, you could make that a slideshow if you want, and have it scrolling. I have done on some of the streams I've done. Um, <laughs> the there was something else I was going to say, and I've completely forgotten where it was. Oh well, never mind. Uh, it'll come back to me. Now this blank bit at the bottom. Now then, why don't we have the actual text so that the reader can see it, yeah? Okay, so I am going to again as well actually, what I'm going to do now is do window capture, okay? So if you click on window capture, you can select one of the open windows on your computer and it will display in real time on OBS. So I'm going to click on Window Capture. I'm going to create a new one. I actually have just realised I have not copied the story I want to do for Guy de Maupassant. But I have got the script of Roman Juliet, which I've been using on the stream, which I'll show you in a bit. So I'll, I'll make it, I'll call it Script, I think. Click on that. And now this gives me an option of all the different windows that are open. This is my YouTube window. Remember I opened that up ages ago? Groove music for some reason is always on. Oh, hello. Why is my... Hang on, let's see if... That's peculiar. Okay. It's not showing the window I wanted to show. So let me switch it off again. Classic idea. Switch it on and off again. Let's go back to script. And properties, because properties is where you can alter what it is. Ah, now there we are. So I've got a Word document open, which is Romeo and Juliet. Okay. That's what I want. Click OK. I need to make it smaller, obviously. And I don't want it to look like a Word document either, do I? So what I'll do, oh, I, beg your pardon, I don't want to make it smaller. What I want to do is pull it down here. So that you can see the text. 
I might pull it across a bit more to so make a bit more space there. But I don't want all this up here. So what I'll do is I'll pull this down to the bottom so that other things basically overwrite it or overlap it, you see? So now I've got that and you should be able to see that I've got, it's handy having a touchscreen laptop, I've got to be honest with this, as I move it up and down, it simultaneously moves up there. I found doing this that because I've only left space for three or four lines that I have to really focus and make sure that's I'm uh, remembering to move it. So I think if I did this again, oh, Siri's talking to me. Um, if I was to do this again, I think I'd make the font smaller, fit more in. So I'm going to put something at the end. I think you need to have something the stream finishes. So I'm going to click plus, add another scene. I'll call this end scene. And there we are, another blank canvas for us and all they want an image i think yeah well, should we use a pre-existing one should we use old the mo pass on again yeah why not pick any picture that's on your laptop and there he is and i'll put another piece of text on again we will give the op have the option of the previous one but i don't want that obviously so we're going to call it post the stream sub and it's wise to pick the same fonts, isn't it? That 72 was quite small, but we'll do that because of the swiftness. And then I'll put thanks for watching. The next stream will be at 10 tomorrow. Hey, we want a bit of a good technique, don't we, for our social media so we should put as well don't forget to subscribe and like Stacy just put an extra space in there okie dokie that's what I want click OK could you change the colour maybe make it stand out more this looks awful. I'm not bothering about the format, but you see the principle, okay? And now, because I've done that, I could put some music there as well, obviously, and then we switch around. So what you would do is, before the stream starts, you've got pre-stream. You've clicked on there, and then that's pre-stream. And when you're ready to go live, boop, you go to the main stream, and then when you finish, I've, I've removed that text, by the way. Uh, don't panic. And then when you finished, boop, you go to the conclusion yeah now then, one more thing to show you and it's very important how the heck do you connect well there's another window in uh, OBS and it's this one you need to go to settings and stream I mean you have a browser around these but stream is the main one now I'm on YouTube so I'm going to click on YouTube and it's a primary server. And then what you do, remember at the very start ages ago, I copied that stream key there. Well, I paste it into here. That is what connects you and your software to YouTube. Now then, before I start streaming, I'm just going to show you this. Start recording. You can make a local copy of the recording. Yeah, just click start recording and stop recording. I'm just going to start streaming. Now, when I start streaming, let's have a look at this live YouTube page. That's the preview window up there, top left corner. And in a moment, it will realise that OBS is talking to it. Remember, there's a lag. It's about a 10 second lag on YouTube, so it won't catch up straight away. And when you are broadcasting, there you go. When you're broadcasting, there will be a lag. So... Don't be distracted if you have a sort of multi-screen setup, or if you just have it on here, when you see that you are not speaking at the same time up there. That's the live one. Right, so there we are. Now, we're not live at the moment. I would have to hit go live to go live, and then I would. Um, simple as that. When you want to finish, 
you hit the it'll say end stream and you hit that and you go off there is your chat there so you can you can do chat with your viewers as well and that's essentially it you then stop streaming and you are done i'm going to show you one little thing which i ordered in the post a fancy little doohickey which has made it a bit easier to run a complicated stream i don't think you need it for a simple stream and that's a stream deck oh it's a lovely toy i promise you so stream deck basically means that all those buttons down there that you have to click can be done remotely which makes life easier so the best way to show this i think is to show you my romeo and juliet stream again there won't be the script at the bottom because i removed it so let's pick romeo and juliet now there we are now Normally, as I said, there'll be the script down there. You see how that works. So I've got a different scene for every character. I've also got a pre-screen. Um, and the idea is, because often people get a little bit mixed up about which family, which character's from, I put the character picture there. That shows who's speaking, because obviously it's a problem when you're doing a drama. If you're reading a, a novel, fine, just read it. But if you're reading a drama, how do people know which character's speaking? Well, they can see it down there, but they can also see the character as well. So I put the picture of the character who is speaking. And then here, what I did was I made family trees for the, the families in the story. And also want to show the church characters and the state characters. So there's that, scrolls around, and then the next one will be the Capula family, which I've colour-coded. I invented a silly crest and I colour-coded it with yellow as the main colour so you can quickly see, oh, she's one of them. She's not a Montague because they're pink. But hey, I can now move to the scene of a Montague. Romeo seems a good one to pick. Boop. And there you go. I, dupli I made one scene and then when you make new scenes, you saw me click on New but I can also, oh, beg your pardon, I've done the wrong thing there. I can right click on an existing one and click duplicate. And then what I get is exactly the same one. And I can just change something like the picture in the top left corner, which means that this scrolling image will keep in time. And this one, because this is scrolling, this has got the social media and then this warning, because there's rude stuff and violent stuff in Roman Juliet. So that's basically what I've done there. And then by using this stream deck piece of software, I'm able to put a, each button as a scene. This can do other things as well. So you can sort of switch on audio or send tweets automatically um, or comments on YouTube. And so when I click the buttons, let's go for Paris. He's got an excellent steak and kidney hat on him. That's how it goes. You do not need this to stream. All you need is a laptop. You don't need a microphone. You don't need extra displays. You just need a laptop. Um, but I just thought because I've set up quite a complicated one, I might as well show you how the whole thing works. So, any questions? Stick them on the comments below. And happy streaming.